And so without further ado, time now for everyone's favorite segment of the week. It is time. Yeah. It's time for a good old fashioned Q&A, MMA fans. Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived to hear from the man himself, Ariel Helwani. Live from the Box Studios in beautiful New York City, it's on the Oh, yes. Nose. A lot of questions now, today. I to took a your quick gander. Get out of your seats and on Over your on feet because Ariel here Hawani he is, subset. Ariel Helwani. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, do want to mention uh, GC is is still in Georgia and Frank is out today, and so it does feel like we are uh, we are a couple men down as far as in the studio. But we've got Chris filling in very well, and we've got New York Rick here on a, a rare Wednesday. New York Rick, how are you enjoying your two time a week visit to the studio these days? Are you all out of sorts? Are you are you feeling like you um, wish you didn't sign up for this? For me, I'd be here every day. Oh, <clears throat> I'd be here Tuesday, Thursday, Friday if I could, uh, but it's more out of out of fairness to my to my lovely and beautiful wife Holly. Okay, um, to make sure that that the uh, the kids are accounted for. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Come on, well, where else would I rather be? This is so. This is, it, is, this is she? Is she? Yeah, she's she's wrangling three kids right now. Yeah, no. Her. So I guess the question was like, is she mad at GC because if he was still here, <laughs> this wouldn't uh, be no, necessary. She's not. She uh, she gets. She's not it. cursing his name. No, not even a little bit. She's a big fan of GC. GC, anything you want to say to Holly about uh, you know leaving her alone with three kids? I mean, the poor no. woman. No. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> no. You don't feel bad about Z this. At, not at all. Really? Wow. You couldn't even fake yeah. it. Nope, not faking it. Not here to do that. This is the Jordan meme right now. Wow. Kids. Okay, all right. So I would have said, yeah, I, listen, I do feel bad, but, you know, life happens and, uh, I'm, you know. I, I am uh, I am very uh, thankful to Rick for making the trip in uh, twice a week. That's, <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't imagine having to do that. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I just couldn't imagine having to go into the studio twice a week. I've never had to do that before. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is, with or without you there, Rick should have been there twice a week for the past two no, and a half years. I'm just saying. I just I know that's tough work. I have to get in the studio twice it's a tough. week. Tough. He sacrifices. I, I mean, okay. Right. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Thank you, Rick, and uh, thank you, Holly. All right. Fine. 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 Um, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, newest first. What do we do? What do we do? Uh, let's go oldest first. How about that? Um, all right. Gilbert Hill. Yo, I, why, why do you make it so tough? A Y A Y Juan, like Aaron Juan for Helwani. I don't know. I don't know what this means. I've been wanting to settle this debate for you guys. Tell me what you think for a fight to be postponed. The announcement of the original date not working should include the new date. Fury Usyk. If a fight falls apart, and the only announcement is that it will no longer take place, McGregor Chandler, it is canceled. If a fight has been canceled, time passes, and then a new date gets announced, the fight was canceled and now rescheduled. Paul Tyson. This is what I believe to be the correct vernacular for this kind of ordeal. Thanks, as always, Gilbert Hill. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I feel like this is kind of what we've said, you know, when talking about the press conferences and whatnot. Fury Usyk, they pulled it, and then the next day announced on this year program uh, a special saturday show so does that count i mean it was 24 hours later but does that count uh i don't know i just think if there is no intention of ever doing it again like the presser in dublin it's canceled if there is an intention of doing it down the line it's postponed pretty simple um and then rescheduled obviously but thank you for that uh this is from sportsmaster who i have to say has asked me this question. Sportsmaster has asked me a question and he's great. And I see him on Twitter and I appreciate his, 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 his fandom and support and his interest in all the things that we do. But he keeps asking me a question about Chris Jericho allegedly sleeping with someone at AEW. I'm like, man, what, what do you want me to say about this? I don't know anything about this. Uh, and, 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 and it seems like people in the uh, comments like this question. And he's asking me if this has anything to do with Cody leaving AW. I have no idea. I don't even know about this story, but I keep seeing it every week. And I'm like, I don't really want to touch this. So I'm sorry. 
but I just want to kind of address it so maybe you yeah. don't feel like you have to ask it every week. I like this strategy. Do you know do you know about this story? I had no idea, but I can't say I like follow the wrestling world as closely as that. Um, but yeah, I don't know why he's so insistent on you being Me? the one to speak on it. Yeah. Um, because it sounds like you're not following it either, but no. Uh, I like the strategy. Addressed and now we can Addressed. Go. Now we're good. Uh Jacob. What is the biggest non UFC slash boxing fight out there to make that isn't Jake Paul versus KSI? That can mean BKFC, Misfits, PFL, or anything else. If you ask me, it's Dylan Dennis versus Tyron Woodley in MMA in some promotion. You have to be kidding me. Are you shitting me right now? That has to be a joke. And since I mentioned his name, why doesn't Dylan train slash corner slash hold a towel and water for Connor anymore? No, he he told me they were friends, remember? They're all good. Um that second part makes me think it was uh a little uh, tongue in cheek. Okay. Yeah. All little, right. Uh... Honestly, I don't know what what is the what is the the biggest, the biggest non... non Oh, so he's saying biggest non UFC and boxing fight. Okay, here's a better question. What's the biggest non UFC fight that can be made in MMA right now? Francis versus whoever. I I, I actually I kind of feel like there's a better answer. First you... than Francis? There's Francis no versus star Hannah outside I mean, I guess if you think Jake Paul is ever going to fight MMA, it might be Jake Paul versus like Nate Diaz or something like that. But um, Francis, Francis versus yeah. somebody. Even if it's against Ferrer that, you know, he's kind of someone that no one really knows. What other MMA fights are you like? No, nah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, honestly, you know, give me Cade Rotolo against Mikey Musumeci. I know? mean, that's fun. I'm in. I'm in. But no, nah, it's, it's got to be Francis, right? You can tune into the Craig Jones Invitational for that. I know. Well, they're not they're not competing against each other. Hey, shout out to Craig Jones. He got Mikey. Mikey a week ago telling me he's not he's not going to be allowed, and then he's signing up. It seems like incredible, one man. has loosened everyone. The, the the stipulations now now he's he's picking them all up. Can I throw out um, an idea? In like two years, you know, how we talked about like Bo Nickel versus Hamza would be like this gigantic fight, America versus Russia. If you really want to cater to the the high school kids, would Cade Rotolo against Peyton Talbot be like the biggest fight possible for the um, you know, the hot topic kids? You know, like yeah, the but skater it's such kids? a it's such a small audience. Like probably like the Gen Z kind of like TikTok generation, but like it's such a small audience, I think that it might not that the return is not gonna be there. It might be the coolest fight of all time. Those two guys. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, that's the, that's the Spider-Man meme fight. Yeah, it's, it's really remarkable. Uh, I know that Rotolo's 35 and... Um, no, sorry. Rotolo's 55 and, 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 and Peyton is 35. But, like, it's so crazy how they're, they're so similar in a weird way, right? Um, I don't know. I was just trying to think, like, what could be a big fight. It, I feel like years. maybe Ro Rojas is... Uh, wait, Rojas? Rosas. Is Ro? Uh, Chiwiwi? Chiwiwi's is in uh, is in the convo, right? He's not like significantly older. Um, no, but they they're just very like you know yeah they're nineties the, skater kids. Yeah, certainly the, there's a there's a vibe there, but I feel like he's somebody who's connected with um, that generation and a potentially even bigger name. You know, like he's 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 got a fan base growing. Going back to the original question, it is quite sad that we cannot like you're saying any Francis fight, fine. But there was once a time where it was like, man, you know, if Bellator could do Patricia Pitbull against uh, freaking AJ McKee, that's big. They've got or, some. They've got some great guys in Bellator and PFL, but they don't really have the foils for them. They don't really. That's have That's what the, I'm saying. It's quite sad that there isn't a matchup out there right now. There isn't a single matchup out there outside of the UFC that you could say like, okay, this one will cut through. Unless I'm missing something. I, I'm trying to think of one. I'm trying to think of PFL, Bellator. I can't think of one. It's That's a, I mean, a sad look, state of affairs. There's some great potential fights, right? Like, I would really enjoy Cyborg versus Pacheco. I think that's a great fight. I would really enjoy seeing that. But it's not a huge fight. It's not like Francis's next fight is going to get 10 times the attention of anything else we can name here. So that's the metric that I'm going by. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lack of, like, depth in a lot of divisions. There's some, like... Johnny Eblen's fighting. I'm watching. Patchy Mix is fighting. I'm watching. There's some great Cedric Dumbay. Sure, fighting, but I'm, I'm talking watching. about I'm talking about a combo. You need the you need the opponent. That's the problem. You need the opponents, and there and there's a lack of of 
the roster strength outside of the UFC. The UFC is where you find that. 14 years ago today, Fabricio Verdum submitted Fyodor Emelianenko in San Jose. Is there anything even close to something like that? Is there anything even close to something like that on paper going in or something that could have that type of impact on the way out? You know what I mean? Yeah. Impact going in, I think, yes, because I think, you know, Verdum was not supposed to be that, right? But it was still Fedor, undefeated dude. That and, was on and... Fedor's back. This is why I'm saying Francis, right? For, if somebody, if Henan Ferreira comes in and knocks out Francis, that will feel big. I don't right? think that it will feel as big. It as won't that. feel as no, no. Fedor like falling was was massive at MMA. It was at the insane. Moment. Um, but I think that's the closest at the moment. I can't think of something closer outside. Even of later that summer, we got uh, Gina and Cyborg. There's nothing close yeah. to that. No, not at the moment. It's kind of sad. There's there's great talent outside the UFC, but but the matchups are difficult. Can I ask it's you guys so a question? Bad. I saw yesterday, and it was first reported by MMA Fighting. Um, Tracy Cortez replacing Macy Barber yeah. against um, Rose Namajunas. Uh, Macy Barber is injured, and I was the one who first reported the the Macy Barber Rose fight, and I saw like ninety percent negativity. Ah, uh, I can't believe it! Like this whole thing now, where people are shitting on women's MMA. All of a sudden, this is like a cool thing to do for some bizarre reason. But yesterday, I saw a lot of positivity about this. Why is it? I don't know. Did you guys notice that too? I saw a lot more people excited about Tracy Cortez versus Rose as opposed to Macy versus Rose. And I, I think Macy is ranked higher than Tracy. Is it just because Tracy's more popular? I'm Probably. Uh, we're lack of a better answer than I'm going to say yeah. Um, yeah, Tracy Cortez has become a, uh, a, fan, a favorite? fan favorite Yeah, in the women's division. Let me see. Um, 125. Macy is four. Cortez is 11. And, and and I saw a ton of comments like, better fight, better fight. Oh, hell yeah. It's like, wow. I was surprised at the negativity for Rose Macy. Maybe for a big arena like Ball Arena where the Nuggets play, people thought there'd be a bigger, you know, a bigger main event. But uh, I found it very noticeable that there was a lot more positivity about the fight than the original fight, the new fight than the original fight. So I don't know. I mean, this is a huge spot for Tracy Cortez too. She hasn't lost since her first fight. She has a, like a 10 fight win streak. Yeah. And um yeah, I guess, yeah. But she's not as like she's she's not even top ten at the moment. First main event for her. Yeah. I get it. I I really think it's her her popularity, yeah. Her um marketability. Yeah, and also Correct. it's it's a fresher <laughs> It's a fresher name. It's a new name that's entering a mix that previous, like Macy Barber belongs in the mix with Rose Namajunas. I think Tracy Cortez is somebody you'd go, oh, does she belong in the mix? And there's a there's an, a lore there. There's a mystery to yeah. that. I mean, she gets her first main event beating Rose Namajunas in Rose's home state. That's a that's a really big moment for her. Yeah, and then, not, and then at that point, she'll definitely be top ten. She'll be six and zero in the UFC. You talked about the marketability. Now you start discussing how many more wins does she need before she could potentially get a title shot. And by the way, for the record, I had no problem with the original, and I, I like the story that you guys are laying out for the new one. I just noticed a big difference in the reaction between uh, the original fight yeah. and the new fight. Speaking of women's MMA, this is from Aaron. Uh, Ariel, where are the scheduled title fights for our women's division um, divisions? Do you have any insight into what's going on with our female champions, Zhang Weili and Tatiana Suarez? Not at the moment. Um, no talks, but I, I suspect we'll start to hear something soon. Pennington slash Pena or Kayla Harrison, maybe the October card um, in Utah, and we suspect Grasso Shevchenko on the Sphere card. So let's see. Um, Cold Palmer. Wow. Shout out to Cold Palmer getting in. I suspect Gareth Southgate saw my tweet. And he put him in finally. And uh, very frustrating times for our England squad, huh, GC? I mean, what's going on? What's happening to these guys? Another it's a tough watch, man. It's it a really tough, tough. To, to sit there for 90 minutes and watch those guys. Like, there just seems to be no fire at all. Like, they, I think they had like 75% control, had 13 shots, and it never felt like any of them were even close to getting in. Obviously, they had the one, but it was offsides. It just it just feels like they are missing something. And now they've gotten set up by winning the group. 
all the powerhouses are on the other side of the bracket. They have this very winnable draw to get to the final, but I have no faith in them after watching their three group stage games. It's, it's worrying for sure. Not even scoring goals. Not even scoring goals. Dude, it's not like I it's think, two two draws. It's zero zero. Yes, I, I I'm I think it was they scored three total goals between them and their opponents in the three group stage games. Like just snoozers. No, like it doesn't feel like I, I know Cole Palmer got in and, and they made some halftime adjustments, but it feels like Southgate just isn't really doing anything to to, you know light a fire i just like i've been waiting for the game where they pop off and now we're in the elimination stage you, you can't you don't really have any room for that remember this in a little over a month's time because what is what is this team right they're they're a collection of incredible talent right they're a collection and they're so talented everyone that touches the ball you're just like oh this guy is unbelievable how yeah. are they not better than this remember this when you're watching an incredible collection of men's basketball players from the u.s take the floor in France, oh. remember this, and then compare it to the team that's been together for okay. years from the North. All Just right. remember this. Just yes. remember this yes. is a preview yeah, of what's to come. Because Team USA basketball typically has struggles on, Just, on winning gold medals. Just time. remember this. They're remember. just like England. They've England's never won the Euros. The, team USA has never won the gold medal. My favorite part, though, of England is as soon as the game goes final, Arnold Allen tweets, <laughs> it's, it's coming <laughs> home. It's just like, <laughs> keep the faith, baby. Keep the faith. I love it. Uh, it's so good. Anyway, here's Cold Palmer. Um, hi, Ariel. I'm sure you've seen the reaction that people have had to the DDP Izzy fight with people calling it the most undeserving title shot ever, even more than the Colby and Cheeto fights, since at least they were coming off wins. I know you have a good relationship with Izzy, Tim Simpson, etc. But can I get your objective opinion on this? Izzy already got his free title match, rematch versus Pereira. Are we going to give him unlimited title shots every time he loses, even after getting dog walked like he did versus Strickland? That wasn't getting dog walked. Get the fuck out of here. That was not getting dog walked. As always, appreciate all your work. Love from Australia. Okay, let me ask you this. Who else? Who else are you giving that title shot to? DDP hasn't fought since January. Who else? Strickland? They're going to say Strickland. You're giving it to Strickland. That's, that's the answer. Strickland, who just had the belt and lost who had a, you know, a, a, a nice win, nothing to write home about over Costa. Is he that much more deserving than the multiple time champion? Is he who defended the belt? Who's a massive draw in Perth. Again, timing matters. Location matters. History matters. What's a bigger fight? Is he versus DDP or Strickland versus DDP? Come on. The, 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 the buildup to DDP Strickland was embarrassing for the sport. It was embarrassing. Strickland had no idea how to handle himself in that spot. Izzy DDP is going to be a gigantic fight. It's going to be a massive fight on so many different levels. There's a buildup, not just last year's Ted a Ted inside the cage international fight week, but even prior to that, they were going back and forth. This is the fight that, and don't forget, this is the fight that the champion wanted. DDP wanted this fight. And Izzy, one of the biggest stars in the sport and one of the most dependable, reliable champions that the UFC has had in the last 10 years. One more go, I'm okay with it. And then who else? Who else has a stronger case? Strickland doesn't have a stronger case. He has a case. He has a case. Does he have a stronger case? Doesn't have a stronger case. Whitaker just fought. Who else? Hamza can't fight in multiple parts of the world. Who else? Like, if you're going to say this, you got to give me someone else. You got to give me a better option. There is no better option. There are other options. But Izzy is the best option by far. And gifted a rematch against Pereira. The guy was champion for like four years and then lost to Pereira. Of course he's going to get a rematch. And what happened in the rematch? He won. Hogwash. Matt, good day to Ariel and crew. Opinions on where the bloodline is heading slash Jacob Fatou's debut on Friday. Any predictions or hopes for the future of the bloodline storyline? P.S. Did you see Bo Dallas's video package on Raw? That's the type of shit that makes a grown man cry. Uh, before we get into that, my condolences to uh, Roman Reigns and his family, his father, the legend Sika. Um, it was announced yesterday that he had passed away, I believe at 81 years of age. So, um, our, our, our heart and our prayers and our love goes to him and his family. Uh, WWE is on fire right now. They are just on fire. They're bringing in all these new members of the bloodline. Jacob Fatu, indie legend coming in. Bo Dallas with the promo of his life. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that they went there. I sent it to Rick, the promo. The way it was shot, the, the VHS style. Uh, he's talking about his brother, Wyndham Rotunda, a.k.a. Bray Wyatt, and his passing and the emotions. 
Triple H and company are on fire. They're on fire. Even the biggest hater of all time, even the biggest AEW freakazoid can't deny that the gap between them has never been bigger. It's never been bigger. And of course, I'm sure this is going to get clipped and all this nonsense. You are a certifiable hater if you are saying that the WWE product is an infinitely more interesting and better than the AEW or any other product right now. They are on fire. Every show is, is a grand slam. And the way they're introducing new characters and the storylines and the crowds, the Euro crowds, the international PLEs as of late have all been better than the next and more interesting than the next. Uh, Roman hasn't come back yet. The Cody title reign has been great. The France show was great. Uh, the Scotland show was great. They're going to Canada next week. Berlin later in the summer. Uh, SummerSlam in Cleveland where the Browns play. They're on fire. What did you think of that promo, Rick? I mean, wasn't that something? I, I'm still not even quite sure what to make of it all because it really does touch on real life tragedy. But holy shit, it's intense stuff. Yeah, it, it's. I, I said it to you in the text. Like the more, the most interesting and like thing that becomes hardest for me to wrap my head around is when WWE or wrestling in general turns real life storylines, uh, real life stuff into storylines, but especially like something that tragic, uh, like the death, death of your brother. And then he's like having a full conversation with himself about dissecting that. That's some like real trippy kind of like, I don't know what to make of it type stuff either. Um, but fascinating. Like I, I was gripped. Um, and especially as somebody who's not like tuned into the day to day, like I didn't know that this was, you know, the angle that they were taking. Um, fascinating stuff. Like, Man, I'm interested. The Chad Gable stuff is great. The uh, the Drew McIntyre CM Punk stuff is fantastic. The Liv Morgan Dominic Mysterio stuff is fantastic. Uh, they're on fire right now. There's no other way to say it. They're on fire right now. And by the way, uh, also condolences to the family of Roy Jones Jr. Uh, he announced on Monday that his son had tragically passed away as well. So uh, can't imagine what he's going through. And uh, our heartfelt thoughts and, and and prayers go out to his family as well. Uh, here's a question for one New York Rick from Iran. Shalom, Ariel, and the team. My question this time is for New York Rick. The recent headlines about Ronda Rousey reminded me of what I consider your worst take ever, her being named comeback of the year. After all these years, can you finally admit that you were completely off? As always, thank you all for making my week infinitely better. We've already, I mean, how many times do we have to do this conversation? <laughs> Listen, ahead of, ahead of the curve, that's all I'll say, you know, <laughs> ahead of the curve, dealing with the mental health issues. Um, it, it was the right thing then. It's the right thing now. I will never, I will never back down from that position. Okay. And, and by the way, I mean, my Rhonda takes have evolved and they continue to be correct that like she hasn't gotten a fair shake from MMA fans. I know that that's unpopular and I know everybody thinks she's quote unquote done it to herself and all this, but I think she's unfairly judged. That's my that's my opinion, and I, and I still stand by it. All right. Uh, there you have it. Um, Israel D., hello from Idaho. Thoughts on our good friend Shell Sonnen insinuating last week that Connor was in rehab while doing his show with DC. What show? They have a show? What's that? Where's the show air? Anyway, thank you as always, Israel D. Uh, he also insinuated that you are playing along as to why the fight isn't really happening. I mean, I don't know. I, I Listen... I don't hope that Chael is right because I don't want to hear of anyone in rehab um, unless you like desperately need it and God bless. If if this was just another like, hey, Chael is just kind of, I, I'm not shocked that he said that. That's him and we all love him and it's just his sort of brand of commentary. I, I do hope that the good people at ESPN who used to put me through the fucking ringer, through the ringer on certain things. I mean, Rick, <laughs> Gina Carano was on our show and talked about the time that she got an errant text message from Dana White talking shit about her, her story. She said that she got the text. She read it and she's telling the story. And before they would agree to clip it off, they made me reach out to the UFC to verify that this happened. They made me reach out to the UFC to verify for this happened. And then they decided to not air the replay on TV the next day. But this is okay? I guess different rules for different people, but that is... Uh, I, I just hope for Chael's sake that this is... that there is accuracy to this. I have not heard this. Uh, we saw 
I mean, we saw Connor last week at the Bellator show. Unless he got a, you know, a one day pass. We saw the pictures. Doesn't look like he's a guy in rehab, but what do I know? Joshua, Ariel, with Dana possibly suggesting August or September not on the cards for McGurger Chandler. He didn't quite say that. He said, what did he say? He said, uh, he's only thinking about this. He's only thinking about this once like he's 100% cleared. And so I think what the play would be is wait till he gets 100% cleared. And then all of a sudden you're in July or August. And then you say like, hey, you know, do the fight in four months in December. They really, like I've said all along, and Connor backed it up on, on the weekend. They want an August, September date. The problem is the pay-per-views are filled up or just don't make sense. So they're either going to make a new date or they're going to have to put them in that potential December slot. Um, anyway, Joshua asked me when I see this getting rescheduled. It's it's too soon. It's too soon. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tug of war right now. It's a tug of war right now and it's just too soon. So if I say anything, it would just not be 100% accurate. Uh, also curious on your thoughts on T-City suggesting a move to 55 after 303. I don't hate it. Uh, he's right. There is a backlog at 45. He doesn't have a gazillion years left. Go for it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Now, what's going to be interesting is, you know, he was he was talking about a move to 55 then he gets this fight on short notice, 45. I'm just curious how the weight cut is going to go. If you're, if, you're, if you're bulking up for a 55 move and then all of a sudden you take a little detour to 45 on short notice, took that fight a week and a half ago, how's the weight cut going to go? We'll find out in two days. He doesn't historically have issues with that. But um, I, I, just, I just wonder, I wonder how that will go on Friday. But after this, if he wins, and even if he loses... I think a move to 55 makes a lot of sense. Rob Mallow. Hey, Ariel, long time, first time. I know you have a bad relationship with Dana. Yeah, I, I don't even call it bad. It's just non-existent at the moment. How's your relationship with Hunter, though? In the event where Dana retires and Hunter takes over, do you think that you would have had or you would have better ties with the UFC, Rob from Montreal? Um, I've never met Hunter Campbell. I've had a conversation via text with him once when he got hired uh he reached out to me after i reported him getting hired by the ufc but that's the only time we've ever talked um i've heard that he doesn't think badly of me that he doesn't talk shit about me or anything like that uh in the past when i was at espn and in vegas i did reach out to try to meet but i didn't hear anything back and uh and i've given him compliments here i think he's in a, an important part of the uh, the company and an integral part of the company. And most of the people that I speak to, the um, managers and fighters all really seem to enjoy working with him and feel like he is fair. And like I said, he's not emotional. He doesn't get personal. He doesn't get too fiery. He's a good yin to Dana's yang, if you will. Um, but I don't have a relationship with him because A, I've never met him in person and we've never had a conversation. We, we might have talked for a second on the phone there in that, I might, I might be, it's been a while. It was like 2018 or 19 max, maybe even 17, now that I think of it. Somewhere in that range. Uh, but, you know, no issues here, and I have no idea what would happen if if Dana left. Who knows? Mm. Hello, hello, from hello, hello. Uh, Connor recently tweeted that Chandler's making 10 times his current contract's purse for that fight, and that's why he's willing to keep waiting. I think it's even close to that much of a pay increase for the fight, or could he really have made more two to three times? I don't think it's 10 times, but there is a Conor clause, and he does get paid more to fight Conor McGregor. 100%. But 10 times is, is a lot. I don't think it's quite 10 times. Gil, how do you handle keeping in touch with those fighters that are retired or no longer very active, but were regulars on the show like Tyron Woodley and Uriah Faber over the course of your long career? I'm sure there must be so many former fighters to reach out to just to show you still think about them. Yeah, I think we do a good job. Uh, you know, Instagram, Twitter, the random texts, they're all kind of, you know, obviously over the years, there's people that you're just not as tight with. Um, there's no reason to reach out. I'm sure there's a, there's a boatload of those for as long as we've been doing that. Like, where's Jacob Volkman at, you know? Uh, used to talk to him all the time, but, uh, for the most part, you know, I, th I think I do a pretty good job. 
I enjoy keeping in touch with them. They've been important figures in the sport and in my career. Uh, Joel D. Hey, Ariel and crew. I've noticed an interesting thing that you keep doing with fighters. You call them friends and consider them friends. However, you've also noted many times that you don't get together with fighters outside of interviews so as to not to blur the lines. Can you explain this juxtaposition? It's very intriguing. Um, do I do I say that I consider the fighter friends? Like, I know I've, I've called DC and Chael friends, but they're not active fighters. Do I call any active fighters friends? Um, I don't think so. Am I wrong, guys? Have I, have I called an active fighter? A I mean, I, I sometimes say like my friend, like, like when I say like, hey, my friend, what's going on? But that doesn't mean like we're actual friends. Like we're not going, we're not making plans. We're not hanging out. We're not going for dinner, coffee, lunch, et cetera. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are journalists that do that a hundred percent. It just was always kind of my thing. And so I feel like I do a pretty good job. Again, as I've said time and again, we're human beings. You're going to have relationships. You're going to have kinship with others. You're going to have, you know, people you like and don't like or connect with. And so that, that relationship is friendly. You'll meet family members. You'll meet kids. You'll meet wives. You'll meet whatever, parents. And so we are friendly. And some of them I talk to more than my own friends, my like actual real friends. But uh, it's just different. I don't know. So I think I think there's a little too much focus on the words and yeah. maybe less on the intention, which is more significant to it. I think mm -hmm. how how the actual relationship plays out is more significant than if you say like, "Oh, that's my friend." Like, I would I would compare it to everybody knows a person who in their life is like, "Oh yeah, I'm friends with that." You know, you mention somebody and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's my friend. I know that," and they aren't really friends with them. Um, they're just friends with everybody. Um, and they're not actually friends with many, many of those people. Every, you know, everybody's their friend. Um, the, the word is kind of transient and a little bit fluid. Like, I wouldn't uh, read too much into that. It's about it's about the actual relationship. Yeah, and I'm looking at the YouTube chat. Uh, people are saying Bisping in the past, Dustin Poirier, Cheeto Vera. I definitely have great relationships with people, and that's just life. But um, I don't know, like if I was getting married tomorrow, am I inviting them to the wedding? I don't know. You know, that's that's friends, right? Um, yeah, but I also don't know. Fr friend can mean, uh, you know. I guess friends friend is friendly. Can, it can mean a million different things. It can mean one thing to you. It can mean a different sure. thing to them. It's a very, it's a spectrum um, that is hard to kind of pin. That's fair. Like, I almost feel like you wouldn't have a list of people that you'd be like, this is my friend, this is not my friend. You could be like, eh, I'm friendly with them, maybe. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's just it's just too fluid. It's a spectrum of of thought that I don't think you could quite quantify in that way. Like, you, a big part of your job is building relationships. The relationships will have different levels of friendliness. And yeah. that is just how that is. I will also say, and I'm okay with saying this, 2009 Ariel is not the same as 2024 Ariel. 2009 Ariel was relatively fresh out of school. Mr. Like, head down, big J journalist, you know, don't do anything. And now, you know, the, the role has evolved, the job has evolved, the, 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 the place in this world has evolved. Like, I have evolved, my personality has evolved. And so I don't think that I should be sticking to the same sort of set of rules that I apply to my life and to my job in 2009 as I did here. Again, or as I do now, um, I don't think that there's a massive difference, but evolution is is okay and healthy, in my opinion. I think the industry has changed quite a bit as well. That is true. That is very true. In, in addition to your own kind of evolution in it, I think I think we're in a different spot in 2024. Uh, Bella, crew, what moments in or outside the cage give the biggest aura boost? Oh, that's a great question. For example, crawling up the stairs, <laughs> crawling up the stairs to the octagon plus 1,000 aura. Have a great international fight week, Connor. Are you following the European Championships? Who's your favorite? Vial Grub, I definitely, I definitely uh, butchered that. Bella from Berlin. And by the way, Matmo says, fist bumping Bruce Buffer as he screams your name is a plus 10,000 aura boost. But Bella then says, it's kind of cringe. I love when they hit their move like Derek Lewis. What do you think? Uh, GC is the youngest one here. Uh, what's the best uh, boost? What are, what are we thinking? I actually like the Bruce Buffer fist bump, but you got to do it properly. Like it's got to look smooth. It's just like, it's just like almost natural. Uh, I mean, the McGregor, when he, 
when he uh when he like walks to the center of the octagon and like puts his arms yeah. out and everything being called the one the only by mm. bruce buffer which is what he does for mcgregor and john jones i mean i feel like that's a that's a pretty big aura booster right there crawling up the stairs that was one that they said yeah you don't like that one no i mean i, I just don't i don't imagine that's just like a a massive work. I feel like standing outside of the cage door and just like taking it all in, that's like, that's increasing it. Uh, it's specific, but Alex Pereira, the, the bow and arrow, I mean, that's, 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 that's gotta be plus 10,000. I don't know what the scale is here. I mean, we, we threw out a thousand, we threw out a 10,000. Uh, I'm not sure of the scale, but I mean, that's a big one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Uh, what about, what about, I mean, John Jones back in the day, crawling up and then doing the one-handed um cartwheel is that a cartwheel yeah, that's pretty yeah it was it's pretty sick was it a cartwheel or was it like a flip it was kind of a cartwheel right it was like it was pretty damn incredible um um the bryce mitchell holding the bible above the head screaming sure um, sure diego sanchez coming out with the yes chant and, and the one time in nebraska he walked out with the the freaking cross like he was yeah, yeah, yeah. you know Seen putting a like some sort of hex on on everyone um and this is all just strictly walkouts like as you're making it to the octagon i suppose i mean you know does, does does sprinting add any some fighters like run to the octagon yeah yeah frankie edgar famously was a was a guy who ran to the octagon um i don't know i'm too old to talk about aura i don't know I, let's be honest. I, I'm also too old to talk about Aura. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, this would be a nice like Twitter thread for people to to chime in. Have you seen those videos, Rick, with the Aura and it's like with the music and all that? Of course, I've seen them I'm oh. on TikTok more than I'm okay. anywhere else in my right, life. Right. I live on. I TikTok. showed I showed the one that Spencer made to my kids, and they freaking love. They're like, oh, we we know that. I don't know where they've seen it. Like, where did it originate? But they loved it. Yeah. Uh, Where did it originate? Everything originates on TikTok. No, but like who did it first? Oh, who? yeah, that I don't know. So some of these things don't have, well, they do have, you can trace them back, but most of the time they become just kind of like an unwieldy thing where nobody knows where the origin is. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I have no thoughts or comment on this. I, I, I'm, I'm not the right demo. You're more of a um, you're more of a boomer type. I'm much closer to a boomer than somebody who could tell you what what gives you positive aura. Well, 100%. speak for yourself, okay? Well, honestly, I mean, it, it's just talking about positive aura is just like doing something cool. Yeah, but I don't know what's cool. That's the problem. Nah. Okay. You're crazy. You're crazy. Uh, Patrick McCrae, favorite segment of the week. Two quick questions. Ariel, do you ever get any feedback from the UFC regarding all the times you are positive about them and how well they're doing? Uh, no. And I don't really, I don't really need the feedback. What's funny though is like you never get that type of feedback from people online, and then you say like one critical thing, you're like, ah, you're such a hater. But no, the answer is no. GC, I may have missed it. How long are you going to be remote for, GC? Mm -hmm. That's the million dollar question right here. Yeah, TBD. Uh, <laughs> I noticed uh, that you moved least... the hat. Yeah, 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 we actually had a whole. We now have an arm here. So oh, I mean, this we is had the, the arm. Weird... Wow. Yeah, we had to adjust everything. I mean, it's it's almost like I'm there at this point. If I could just paint this gray, the it, same it gray really that actually Rick has, is. It actually is it, quite incredible. The arm is a huge difference oh, maker. Oh, God. It changes, changes everything. It, <laughs> it changes everything. Shout well, out to where, where does the arm, like, where does it attach to? A desk? Yeah, so it's attached to the desk. Uh, and, wow. Frankie uh, set yeah, you up like this? Like, yeah. I mean, it's easy. I was FaceTiming him yesterday to set it up. I mean, it's it's high level stuff over here. How long did it take? Five minutes. Wow. And what is the what does the mic connect into? Your computer or like a switchboard? It connects into yeah, like uh, something that is similar. I don't I don't know the exact name for it. It's plugged into something that's plugged into my computer. If legit, if that wall was black, no one would know that you're not here. Yeah. The only yeah, way they would know been. is if we had in studio guests and you didn't get pictures with them. People would start Bingo. to question. There it is. There it is. Um, anyway, your presence is missed around the offices. Everyone in the office. Oh, I miss being there. Everyone in the cubicles are asking about you. <laughs> the 
CQ fields. You're just like, yeah, where's he at? Where's old CB? Where's GC at, man? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's just a clamoring around the office, the happy hours after the show. Oh, yeah. Especially on Wednesdays. Uh, the lunches, yeah, the dinners, the, the team meetings. I'm sure everyone's just dying for me to be there. Adriano, hello, Ariel. Why is McGregor Chandler not possible for the Abu Dhabi card? If Saudis can put on fights with the biggest names in boxing and have an audience, why couldn't Abu Dhabi do the same? Eddie Head holds 18,000. Isn't that similar to T-Mobile? Apologies if it's a stupid question. I get that Vegas is the fight capital of the world, yada, yada, yada. But surely Abu Dhabi would break gate records and pay UFC handsomely to host an event there. Uh, I don't I don't know if they would break a $20 million gate. I'm sure they would pay top dollar, but... Um, I think putting a McGregor fight in Vegas is where you can command the most amount of money. Speaking of the uh, Abu Dhabi card, some news yesterday, Armin Sarukian getting his nine-month suspension for throwing a punch at the fan who flipped him the bird. Um, if he does this PSA, which his manager, Danny Rubenstein, has told us that he will do the anti-bullying PSA, it will get reduced to a six-month suspension, and that's retroactive to... Uh, you know, when he fought at UFC 300, so it would, it would come to a close October 12th. The pay-per-view in Abu Dhabi is scheduled, I do believe, October 26th. So it all works out, and that's no coincidence. They had to fight for that. The original thinking was a nine-month suspension without a reduction of any kind, which is completely absurd that they were thinking of suspending him for the same amount as they suspended Igor Severino, who bit his opponent. Um, I listen, I know that fighters can't go around punching people, but A, it is important to note it didn't land. And B, it's important to note that he was provoked. And C, he didn't bite his opponent in the cage. And and D, why does Nevada get the 25,000? That's absurd to me. Like that money should go to charity. That money should go to, I don't know, an anti-bullying campaign. Like why, why does Nevada get that money? It's absurd. Anyway, no harm, no foul, because it doesn't affect his title fight, which is scheduled for October 26th, or at least that's the plan. It's not a done deal just yet. Um, but to me, the two crimes don't, don't match. You guys agree with me? Severino biting his opponent is way worse than what Tarukian did. Agreed. Yeah, I think so too. And then the 25K. It's like, what? Nevada gets 25K for that? That's that's almost as bad as Golden Boy getting a million dollars from Ryan Garcia for no reason. I'm mostly just like over like the dude flipped them all like the dude was provoking him and yeah. we're and we're just like acting like he flew off the handle. Like I I, I believe I saw, and this is me now doing this off the top of my head. They, going back in time, I believe somebody had contacted the fan, and I wish I could give credit, but I don't remember who it was. And they just said, like, yeah, I'm not even thinking about this anymore. Like, uh, I I did something silly. Sorry. And so, like, let's let this lie. Like, yeah. it's not it's not a big deal. It's a win-win for us, though, because he'll still get to have a title fight in October, potentially, and we'll get a great bullying PSA from Lawrence <laughs> Rookie. I wonder if it will be made public. That's the... I mean, ugh, I feel like it has to PSA. PSA public service announcement. You, you got to oh. make it public. I I need that. Yeah, I, I, I will be <laughs> I will be watching. I, for I, sure. Yeah, you're right. I wonder if it's just for like the enjoyment of the five people in Nevada. Like, all right, no, that, no, he well, looks sincere. Twenty five k and they get the PSA. No, we at yeah. least have to get the PSA. That's fair. That's fair. They're strong That's arming him. Great. They are bullying him. They are strong yeah. arming him <laughs> into making a promo about anti bullying for great. a thing where. This has nothing to do with bullying. Like, why, why is he doing an anti-bullying promo? What does this if have to do with bullying? anybody bullied, the fan bullied yes. and provoked Armin into doing this. Uh, it's going to be great. What if the fan is in the in the bullying PS? Uh, it's all nonsense. By the but, way, someone in the YouTube chat saying, what if he would have connected? He could have gone sued. Well, guess what? He didn't connect. He so, didn't. And the guy said, no, he's not. But, like, the fact that he didn't connect is a very important detail. I know what they're trying to do. They don't want fighters going around trying to punch fans. I get yeah. that. I get that. But he didn't connect. And on the same day, you give the other guy a nine-month suspension, same amount, for biting. That's pretty damn bad. I don't know. I guess, I guess in their mind, throwing a punch at the innocent bystander fans, not so innocent, but you get the point, is worse than doing something to an actual combatant. I think that is the, yeah, the logic behind it. The 25K yeah. annoys me. Why do they get that money? Oh, I'm much more annoyed by the whole thing than the money, like the the length of the suspension, the stupid PSA. 
Oh, I'm personally looking forward to the PSN. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wait, do we think it's going to be like an actual like video where it's like, nah. "Hi, I'm Armin Sarukian." Bro, they like That's you, what I'm hoping. I Him want in, like a nice button down, <laughs> some slacks. I want Hi, him I'm to be UFC freaking... fighter Armin Sarukian. No, I want If to somebody be like... ever flips you off, the proper move is to continue about your day and just walk to the octagon. You know what's the move? Do it while you're wrestling an alligator. You know? <laughs> Wait, who, who, Here I am bullying an alligator. Don't be this person in real life. The Check move yourself is to make it before a you wreck yourself. That is, that is hilarious. That will gain him fans. That's, that's how you do it. You make it completely unserious and funny. Who is the audience for this? Is he doing a PSA for other fighters? Are they, are they, are they going to use this material as a lesson to other fighters not to be bullies? Is this for the general public to not bully people? And like, what is what is the intended audience for this? I'm, I'm still not sure exactly what's happening here when it comes to this PSA. Between now and October, we're going to find out. <laughs> yeah, it's all just them trying to send a message. <laughs> that's, that, that's why I think it's silly. If there was actual intent, right? If there was an actual intent and they were like, look, you cannot do this. We're going to really punish you then I'm kind of like okay with that outcome. But this is very clearly not an actual punishment and very clearly just to kind of like flex authority. So like why? What, what's the point of that? I'd almost... And I, actually, I'm not going to speak that into the world. But anyway, I'm glad I'm glad he can reduce it. Uh, here's Ben. Hello, Ariel. I know you've talked about not being so invested in the breaking news game these days, but my question is, do you miss it? It seems like the more chaotic part of the media, as you have talked about in the past, but watching you work during the McGregor saga was really great work, and it seemed like a little fire in your belly. Uh, no, I do not miss it at all. It's it's just it's extremely time consuming, and I don't mind time consuming. I don't I don't mind hard work, but the 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 juice isn't worth the squeeze. And the UFC has programmed these fighters and managers and coaches to think that it's the greatest sin of all time to talk about. Like yesterday's a perfect example. Woj gets the Mikhail Bridges news. He breaks it. No harm, no foul. That's his job. He's an insider. Everyone's happy. We're talking about it. It's a part of sports media. The The freaking thing keeps going and going and going. The world doesn't end. They seem to think that these fight announcements are, are more important than anything when they don't even treat them as big deals. I mean, they're literally showing up at press conferences, reading the biggest fights of the year off a piece of paper. And yet they, they, they put the fear of God in these people. And so the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. Like I said, the relationships, having people on the show having people comfortable to, you know, talk about things is way more important to me. And I know that there's value and there's, there's an economy attached to that, but I sort of feel like I, I, I've been there, done that. It was fun, but it was supremely stressful. And, and how it got out of my system was when I went to ESPN, they kept telling me that they didn't want that, that they, and, and maybe that was just a way to like appease the, the friction but uh, they just said, like, do you. Do your thing. Do the show. Do Ireland bad guy. Do whatever. Do the interviews. We don't want that. And that kind of like slowly, slowly, but surely got me out of it. And once you're kind of out of that, uh, you realize, gosh, it's way better being on this side of the fence. Hut, Ariel, am I alone in thinking that the Mike Perry, Jake Paul interview was by far one of the weirdest examples of two fighters talking shit and building a fight? Is their fight going to be streamed on Pornhub? What the F was that? Seems like they're ready to bang. What are your thoughts on the interview? Love the show. Love the watch parties. Shout out to GC and Frank. Thank you. No, I liked it. I didn't have a problem with it. I mean, there were some like funny lines, but I thought it was great. They were all fired up. I had no issues with it. It was, I actually thought it was one of Jake Paul's best performances in quite some time. It didn't think, it didn't seem to me like he was overthinking, that he was like reading off a mental script. Perry was fired up. Private school Perry. The, baby poop line like i thought it was great it was different it was fun i enjoyed it uh gyro martinez hey ariel i used to love your questions back in the day when dana would do the scrums what is one question that stands out to you from those days that you've asked him golly i don't remember i have no idea i mean some of the the debates about fader and whatnot um those were fun but a specific question i have i have no idea uh, Cole, good day, Ariel and crew. Have you heard any word regarding who else will compete on the Perry versus Paul card? Yeah, I mean, we know about we know about H2O Silva, we know about Amanda Serrano. There's one fight that I think would be of interest to MMA fans if it comes to fruition, but uh, still in the works. 
So nothing that we can say at the moment. Here's a more important question, also from Cole. For the crew, favorite flavor Pringles? Thanks and love the show. Do you guys have a favorite flavor of Pringles? Yeah, not something I really keep stock of. I, I watched a, I watched a video uh, the other day about Pringles uh, not having any potato in them. They're just like a, wow. a paste. Yeah, they're just like a... I don't even know what they are. They're just like a crisp, crisp of... <laughs> I don't know what. There's, there's no potatoes in them, though. Kind of my uh, Barbecue? Sour cream I'm, and onion? I'm an original. Give me that red... Give me the red can. Oh, wow, original. Wow, there's Correct. all kinds yeah, of weird flavors now. Pizza and like sour cream and onion. Pizza's I, interesting. The pizza's fun. Uh, sour cream and onion's great. Uh, y'all ever make the duck? The the duck? Of course, of course. Classic. Classic. Okay. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm a simple when it comes to all chips. I don't like cheesy chips. I don't like sour cream chips. Salt and vinegar is, Salt a, and vinegar is, is, a is as far as I'll go, but otherwise original. So, Bro, have you, original, have you ever had ketchup kind of, chips? I have, and I don't like them. That's classic. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge ketchup guy. If I'm going salt and vinegar, it needs to be like the kettle. It needs to be like extra crunchy. I don't know yeah. why. Uh, but yeah, Pringles. I'm I'm going sour cream and onion. It's uh, the, the aftertaste is just too extreme. It's very salty. Of, of sour cream and onion. I just Pringles feel like I I, I, I. I just feel like I. I, I you know, I feel it right here for days. By the way, uh, breaking news. For days, I, wow. I don't know if we have the breaking. Dun, dun, dun. Wow, Chris. What do we need Frank for? And, and the breaking news is that Frank has just texted us all dressed. Yes. Uh, he just texted us all. He's still, oh, Frank, wow. we love he's, you. He's watching. We love you, Frank. We love you. We miss Our you. Guy, Frankie. I mean, sure, there's been a few comments about how great of a job Chris is doing. And it's like, you know. But I, I didn't say any of that. Uh, and we wish the best to you and the family. Yeah. And uh, we hope everyone's doing well. Thank give you, give us a thumbs up, Frank. Give us something. Give us a who me. Give us something. Give us a meow. You know? I hope he's who doing me? all of this. <laughs> wow. Chris has got it all. Wow. And and that's, by the way, that's just a byproduct of Frank's great teaching, I presume. Did he tell him yeah. about Jazz Davicius? Uh, it might be a picture on the soundboard. <laughs> you didn't tell him about Jazz Davisius. All right, fair enough. Um, there's only so many. By the way, veteran move by Frank. Give some of the intel, but not all of the intel. I think that's brilliant on his part. Yeah, that's vet stuff. That's vet stuff. One, one last thing on the Pringles before we move on. Yes. Uh, whenever I eat Pringles, it's like 10 at a time. It's never just, I'm never just putting one crisp in my mouth. You know, they've actually said uh, once you pop, you can't stop. That's um, a good point. In relation to that. Also, I think the video that I watched is fake news because ingredient number one on the back of a Pringles can that I'm looking at right now is dried potatoes. <laughs> so, I got duped. I got duped by the internet. I tell my kids this all the time. Swindled. They the tell me stuff and they're like, where'd you get this from? Fake YouTube? Uh, well, it's fake news. I got swindled. Gets, uh, gets all of us. Um, here's one more. Unless we have our guest, we have our guest. Okay. Uh, Dubinsky, hi, Ariel and crew. I'm going to Vegas for my first ever International Fight Week. Dubinsky has been to more International Fight Weeks than GC. This is crazy. Well, he hasn't yet. Oh, well, well, yeah. After this week, well, let's he will see. Have. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Have. Yeah, I mean, will I ever make an International <laughs> Fight Week? Remains to be seen. We don't know. No one, no one knows. TBD. I am super stoked to hopefully meet some of the fighters. I remember you reading or teasing us about potentially doing a live show in Vegas. Any chances you're still considering this? Either way, I appreciate you and the crew's hard work. No, no live show. There was some talk, but um, the plug was pulled. Sorry. Uh, David, but enjoy, my friend. It's going to be a great time. Uh, okay, one last one. David, hello, Ariel and team. People's main event is Gary versus Page with Page's age and with a big finish. Does he leapfrog the guys in front of him to fight Edwards if he wins? Bring back the VVIPs. Go Bills, David. No, but it'll be maybe like one max two more away from that. All right. Thank you very much to everyone who sent in questions. Tremendous stuff. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.